In this lesson, we're looking at how do I solve rational equations? A rational equation is going to have a fraction, and you might have to combine by adding or subtracting. But what we're looking for is how do we solve for x? The first thing we're going to do is try to factor all the denominators so that we can find the restricted values. When I look at this first one, the only thing that is going to factor is the last denominator. So I could bring out a 3, and it would be 3 times x plus 1. Based off of these denominators, we see one excluded value. If I look at the first one, x plus 1, that tells me that x cannot equal negative 1, or we would be dividing by 0. So there's one excluded value. There's no x in the second fraction. There's the same x plus 1 in the last one. So there's the only excluded value of negative 1. Now when we're actually trying to solve these, we're going to multiply through with the least common denominator so that we can get rid of all the fractions. If I look at each denominator, I'm trying to see what does each one have that the others don't. So in this x plus 1, it would not have the 2, it would not have a 3. So I know that 2 times 3 is 6. So 6 is part of the common denominator. And then if I look at the second fraction, it has a 2. It does not have an x plus 1, and it doesn't have the 3. Well, we already included the 3 here, so x plus 1 is new. And then I look at the last one. It's got the x plus 1, it's got the 3, it doesn't have the 2. So it would need to be a 2. So the greatest, or sorry, the least common denominator is 6 times x plus 1. We're going to multiply that through the entire equation. So I'm just going to rewrite this over here. So we can see what we're working with. If I distributed, I'd have... 3 over x plus 1, that's being multiplied by 6 times x plus 1. Then we had minus 1 over 2, and it's being multiplied by 6 over x plus, or 6 times x plus 1, equals 1 over 3 times x plus 1, that's being multiplied by 6 times x plus 1. So the reason that we multiply that through to everything is because now we can simplify these fractions. So x plus 1 over x plus 1 would simplify out. This can also reduce because 6 over 2 is just 3 over 1. And then 6 over 3 is 2 over 1. And the x plus 1's also simplify. So what we notice is that all of the denominators are going to be gone because we multiplied by that least common denominator. Then we just see what we have left. So on this first one, I have 3 times 6, so 18, minus 1 times 3 is just 3, so 3 times x plus 1. equals, and then 1 times 2 is just 2. That's all we have. So if I distribute this minus 3, I get negative 3x and a negative 3 equals 2. We solve for x. So negative 3x plus 15 equals 2. Negative 3x equals negative 13. And then divide to get 13 over 3. This x value should work in our equation, but we have to check for extraneous solutions. We've had those before, but we check for extraneous solutions against our excluded values. 
That's why we found those in the very beginning, because we know that x cannot be negative 1. Well, we didn't get negative 1, so we should be good. If you wanted to plug your answer back into your equation, you can. I would use your fraction button, but it would be 3 over, and then our x value, which was 13 over 3, plus 1. Then go out of the fraction, minus 1 half. All right, so that side should equal the same thing as when we plug in x again. So that was 1 over 3 times 13 over 3 plus 3. And I get 1 16th each time. So that means that value does work in our equation. All right, number 2, we still want to find a common denominator, but we can't do that until we have factored everything. So in that first fraction, I can factor out an x, and I'm left with an x minus 1, plus 1 over x minus 1 equals x squared plus 3x plus 2, and x times x minus 1. So notice I didn't factor the top one here. We're not worried about factoring the numerators, we're just factoring the denominators, because that's what's helping us find these excluded values. So when I look at these excluded values, we actually have two. In this first x, that factor of x tells me that x cannot equal zero. And then this factor, x minus one, also tells me that x cannot equal positive one. So we actually have two excluded values. We're gonna multiply by that common denominator so if I took this thing and multiplied by x times x minus 1, that would end up giving me 2 over x times x minus 1 is being multiplied by x times x minus 1. So you're just taking it and multiplying it to every single fraction. So then I have plus, I think it's just helpful when you write that in a different color just because it makes it a little bit easier to see that something different is going on here. Equals x squared plus 3x plus 2 over x times x minus 1. That fraction is also being multiplied by x times x minus 1. And if I simplify these, the x is canceled out, the x minus 1 is canceled out, the x minus 1 and x minus 1 canceled out, and then same thing here, the x and the x minus 1s cancel out. What we have left will be a 2 in the first one plus 1 times x is just x equals, and then x squared plus 3x plus 2. Since I have a quadratic, we want to get it equal to 0. So I could subtract 2 and subtract x, which leaves them with x squared still, but 3x minus x is 2x. And 2 minus 2 is just 0, so I'm not, not going to have a constant term. I still need to factor a quadratic expression. So I could factor out an x and be left with x plus 2. That would give me two solutions, x equals 0 and x equals negative 2. When I compare these to our excluded values, this one cannot work. x cannot be 0 because we already said that was an excluded value. So there's only one value that does work, and that's negative 2. If you plug that back into the equation, it will work. All right, number 3. There's a little bit more to factor, but remember, we're only factoring the denominators. We're not worried about the numerators. So I have x plus 4 over x plus 2 minus 4x minus 16. And let's factor this denominator. So x squared came from x times x. Factors of 10 are 5 and 2, so 5 and 2 
but they also make seven when I add them together, so that's what that would factor to, equals x minus three over x plus two. Now, if I'm looking at the entire denominators of all of them, we'll find our least common denominator. But before we do that, we need to look at the excluded values. So those excluded x values are gonna be from this x plus two. I find that x cannot equal negative two. From the x plus five, x cannot equal negative five. So those are two excluded values, negative two and negative five. Now we can multiply by our least common denominator, which would be x plus two times x plus five. So we multiply that through, I get x plus four over x plus two, and it's being multiplied by x plus two times x plus five. minus 4x minus 16, x plus 5 times x plus 2. This fraction was being multiplied by x plus 2 times x plus 5 equals x minus 3 over x plus 2. And it was being multiplied by x plus 2 times x plus 5. So we did that so that we could simplify all the denominators. If you kind of understand how that's going to simplify, you don't have to write it out like this every time, but this would simplify all the way down to x plus 4 times x plus 5 minus 4x minus 16 equals an x minus 3 times an x plus 5. There's a little bit of distributing I've got to get done first, so that would be x squared plus 9x plus 20 in that first group, minus 4x, but also we are distributing our minus, so that turns out to a plus 16, equals, and then we distribute these two. So the x squared plus 2x minus 15. We can combine like terms on the left and that would give me x squared plus 5x plus 36 equals x squared plus 2x minus 15. What we notice is that when we subtract x squareds, they're going to cancel out. So let's say I move these x squareds over, minus x squared minus x squared automatically that cancels out. I can move the 2x over, so minus 2x minus 2x, and this gives me 3x plus 36 equals negative 15. I can subtract 36, negative 15 minus 36 is negative 51. And we divide by three, so x equals negative 17. If we double check that against our excluded values, it's not one of the excluded ones, so x does equal negative 17. And then if you want to double check your answer, just plug it back into the original equation to see that it works. Last one, number four here. It's already factored as much as it can be, so those excluded values, excluded values are x cannot be 0 or negative 3. Now I want to take this thing and multiply by our least common denominator. So what I'm doing is looking at each one, which would be x times x plus 3 here. And if I multiply it through, you'll see that the x over x is going to cancel out. So I just have 3 times x plus 3 equals then we multiply this to here. So two times x times x plus three, the x plus threes are gonna cancel out. So all that's left is two x plus, and then we do six times this. 
Well, there's nothing for it to cancel out with. So it's just six times X times X plus three. If it's helpful for you to write every single piece like that, that's fine. Go ahead and then you'll see that it does simplify to this. But I get three X plus nine equals two X plus six X squared plus 18 X. Let's simplify this a little bit on the right side to get six X squared plus 20 X. But because it's quadratic, we want to put it all equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract three X over here. So that's six X squared, 20 X minus three X is 17 X. And then I subtract the nine over, it gives me negative nine. If you try to factor this, you'll see that it actually doesn't end up factoring. So we get to this problem where we can't factor it. What can we do to solve a quadratic equation? Our option is using the quadratic formula. So if I do that, it's going to say negative B, which is negative 17, plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A, which was 6 times C, negative 9 all over 2a, 2 times 6. So negative 17 plus or minus the square root of something. Let's figure out what, what goes inside that square root sign. So 17 squared minus 4 times 6 times a negative 9 is 505 over 12. We can try to simplify 505. It doesn't simplify any further. And so, in that case, actually 505 would simplify. Let's see, 505 divided by 5 is 101. No, it doesn't. Okay, so that's as far as we can make it. And it's not one of these excluded values. <clears throat> so that's our final answer. We actually have two, one that's plus in there and then another that's minus. So if you had to type these out separately, just look to see if it asks for the two of them separately or in a comma separated list, maybe.